Welcome to week three. We're on an abandoned road somewhere in Topanga Canyon. Let's just jump right into it, shall we? Let's start with backwards rolls. We're gonna do eight of these. Here's three. Last one, eight, good. Back the other direction. Six, seven, eight. We're going to do half dislocate. Start from your mid chest and go to your mid back. By now this stuff must be pretty familiar. Four. I didn't bring my dowel to this abandoned secret location. Good. Palms up. We're going to do the rotator cuff flies. Three. Six. Seven. And eight. Very good. On to the cat and camel. Inhale, look at the sky or the ceiling. Exhale, look at your belly button. Two more. Last one, inhale, look at the sky. Exhale, look at your belly button. Good. Bird dogs. So this week, we're gonna be doing five new exercises, um, which again is just building that foundation so that you have a nice catalog, a nice Rolodex of movements to be able to do, whatever your environment. The warm-up's always the same because I feel like this sequence of movements really helps to warm up all parts of your body that you'll be needing. Well, you always need all parts of your body, but it really warms everything up for the work ahead in these movement patterns. Last one. All right, let's go into the plank. 30 seconds. Really pushing out across your shoulders, squeezing your glutes, curling your hips down and in. We're looking for the hollow body position here. Ten seconds. This should be getting a lot easier. So hopefully it is. Let's transition to the side. Again, you can look at your hand if that makes you feel super unsteady. You can look at the ground. You can be doing this on your elbow. Whatever you're most comfortable doing. 10 seconds. And switch. Almost there. Five seconds. And switch to a reverse plank. Chest tall. Really pitch your hips up. Roll your shoulders back. Squeeze your glutes. Squeeze your hamstrings. Squeeze your lower back. Relax. All right, so 
We got five new movements today. We're gonna to start with the goblet squat. Now the goblet is basically the body weight squat. The motion is exactly the same, only we're gonna use a dumbbell or a kettlebell or a sack of flour. Whatever you have that's available, you're gonna use that as your resistance. So I'm gonna take this, keep the dumbbell married to my chest. I guess actually I'll do this in profile so you can see. Um, I'm gonna push my hips back, keep my chest tall, and we're gonna do eight of these. Remember, you take a big deep breath as you descend. So I'm taking in air into my belly as I descend here. Here we go. Three, good. Four. Five, three more. Six. Seven, last one. Eight, good. 45 seconds rest. <sighs> Shake everything out. It's a whole new world when you start to add that resistance. And you can get quite strong just holding something here at your chest. The reason why we do the goblet as opposed to putting it on your back is that this really helps you control your center line. Your center of gravity stays here. You're not rocking forward, you're not rocking back, and it allows you to really push your hips back, which is kind of crucial to the movement. Next, we are going to be doing flies. So with the fly, you're, you have a slight bend in your elbows, getting a deep stretch in the bottom, and you're coming up with that same bend and squeezing at the top. I want you to stop about a foot apart at the top. Deep stretch in the bottom, squeeze. Here we go, number three. Good, halfway there. Deep stretch, squeeze at the top. Two more. And eight, good. The reason why we don't bring the dumbbells together at the top is because that takes tension off the chest and the shoulders. That actually allows you to rest at the top and we don't want that. We want constant tension. It's kind of rugged out here and I half expect a, a massive hawk or eagle to swoop down and steal me in its talons. So if that happens, um, well, this will be cut short. All right, here we go, one arm dumbbell row. So the trick here is, now you can do this with your knee on the bench, which is the way I really teach it, but if you get pretty advanced, you can just have your hand here as long as you can maintain that position in your back. You want an arch in your back, your chest tall, so your hips are lower than your chest. This back leg, people will bend it too much or they'll straighten it too much. You need to get in a place where it's comfortable so that you maintain this arch, okay? So I'm in a row, eight of these. My range of motion is nice and long. Big stretch in my lats here and a big squeeze at the top. Two, perfect. Three more. And eight, other side. Notice that low back stays nice and arched throughout the entire movement. Good, 45 seconds. The one arm dumbbell row is a variation on our pulling in that it's a horizontal pull. We try and do vertical and horizontal pulls in order to really train the back through all its ranges of motion. Um, but I happen to love that movement because you can get very strong and really change the look of your back by doing it. Okay, next up we have the one-legged glute bridge. 
So you're going to plant your heel. You want your, the closer your butt is to your heel, this, this shape here, the further away, the easier this is going to be because of leverage. So my range of motion is much more increased the closer I get my heel to my butt. So I'm going to do eight of these. Drive up, squeeze that hamstring, come back down. Two, good. Four, good. Two more. And if you do these right, they're a real challenge. Other side. You'll know you're doing it right because your hamstring really squeezes tight. Perfect, eight. Okay, moving on. The knees to elbows, everyone's favorite. Now, we're only doing eight on each side, but this will be exponentially harder if you make sure that you do this nice and slowly, okay? So, we start in our plank position, pushing out across our shoulders, butt squeezed, and I'm gonna bring my right knee to my left elbow, here we go. One. Should really feel that nice squeeze in your midsection. It's four. Halfway there. Really really try and get that knee to the elbow. Last one. <laughs> Excellent. If you can't get it all the way there yet now, that's fine. That's something you'll, you'll definitely want to work up to though. Oof, round one's down. Get some water if you need it and prepare for round two. So that's our five exercises. I'm gonna go a little bit faster through that sequence this next time because uh, number one, I don't need to explain it. And number two, the single leg stuff, when we do one on each side, it just takes a lot longer. So the second round I'll go, well, moderately faster. And again, if it's too fast for you, take a little extra time. We really only have 20 minutes to cram all this work into. So it's focused, it's intense. And man, is it effective. All right, here we go. Goblet squat, eight of these. Weight married to your chest, big deep breath as you descend. There's four. Perfect. 45 seconds. Whew. There's apparently a mountain lion left in LA County. So hopefully we don't see it today. Honestly, it sounds like I'm terrified of nature in this commentary, and I'm not. I just know that <laughs> we're in a remote spot, guys. All right, here we go with flies. Exercise number two. Eight of these. Big stretch in the bottom. Big squeeze at the top. <sighs> Try and get a little deeper the bottom of every stretch. Think of it like a 1 64th of an inch deeper every time. Good. 45 seconds. <sighs> Shaking everything out. Some nice blood flow. Good circulation happening.
wasn't sure if we were gonna be able to shoot this out here today because the Santa Ana winds have been threatening to blow out microphones. But it seems okay. One arm dumbbell row, starting with whichever side you choose. Maintain that arch in the back. Let's go eight of these. Big squeeze at the top. Full range of motion. Good. Other side. Nice. Shake everything out. 45 seconds rest. Water if you need it. Behind the camera, what you can't see is a vast, vast view of the ocean where it connects to the sky and you can't really see where one ends and the other begins. Sometimes I feel like it's exactly what training is like. It seems like a loop, but in the best possible way. Here we go, start with whichever leg you choose. You're gonna be squeezing hard at the top. You can do this with two feet or one. Here we go. Good, halfway there. I'm gonna scoot a little closer to make this harder. Five. Last one. Good, other side. Four. Doing great. Good. 45 seconds. Hope you can see a blue jay fly across the frame. A lot of them out here. And it was never my intention to make sure that I was in a setting with lots of wildlife for these trainings, but it's kind of nice, isn't it? All right, knees to elbows, full plank position. Here we go, eight on each side. Two. Good, getting that knee all the way up. Halfway. Six. Here comes the wind. Last one. Very good. Two rounds down. It's awesome work. Get some water. Definitely earned it. If you're doing these one-legged glute bridges with me right now, you're getting stronger. It's great. Not an easy exercise. And the slower you do it, the more deliberately, the bigger the squeeze at the top really gets a, a powerful contraction in those hamstrings. I'm gonna switch it up here and face the other way for this. How about that? Chest tall, last round. Let's do it. Don't mind that airplane. One, good. Big deep breath as you descend. There's five, three more. If 
15 seconds. I'm in 45. <laughs> Tell you what, you add that weight to that squat and it's just a whole new kind of taxing on your body. It's awesome. It doesn't take much. Eventually you'll be doing it with much bigger weights and you will love the way that your glutes and hamstrings and quads look as a result. All right, here we go. Flies, last round. Remember, a little bit deeper on every single one. Halfway there. Deep stretch. Good, two more. Last one. Excellent. 45 seconds, let's go. Nice thing about this breeze though, is that it's drying the sweat. You know, the last one I'm gonna do, so you can see what this looks like if you don't wanna put your knee up. Back's arched, full range of motion here. Let's go. Two more. Beautiful, other side. Back arch, chest tall. Done with those, 45 seconds. Doing so good, we're almost finished. Light at the end of the tunnel. Two more exercises. And we get to sit down and meditate. It's the beginning of week three. Kind of exciting, huh? Two weeks down, five new movements. Building and building and building. It's an incredible feeling. Here we go. Eight on each leg or both feet together. Three more. Good, other side. Get those hips up as high as you can. Good, one more. Big finish, nice work. 45 seconds, one more movement. One more movement. Get some water if you need it. Shake everything out. One more abdominal movement. And then we sit still. 20 seconds. All right, let's start in that strong plank position, hollow body position. Last round, here we go. Just two. Just 
four on the right. Four left. And six. Two more. Last one each side. And eight. So um, let's sit still for five minutes. This is just for you. Uh, you're gonna focus on your breath, observe your thoughts, not engage with them, and just control your breathing. Turn inward, begin.
That's time. Wow. I know that since this is day 15, uh, it's no big deal for you to be meditating anymore. Um, you know, that's 15 days in a row of the last five minutes of your training session. You're sitting still and, and turning inward, but it never ceases to amaze me how relaxed and peaceful just five minutes can be. And I think as you move through the rest of the program and beyond, you'll start to be curious about what it feels like when you do longer and longer meditation sessions. And there are some really fascinating insights to be learned when you go down that path. So uh, I encourage you to do that. But in the meantime, stick with five minutes because it's totally doable. It's baked into the programming and it makes you feel so fantastic. Um, great job today. Thanks for getting through it. Don't forget, you have so much power. Use it wisely. Have a great, great week. And I'll see you next week for the final training session.